Good afternoon. Welcome to this last session of the day in Auditorium B. Uh, this will be a lighting talk session, and uh, uh, we're going to have four lighting talks. We have four speakers. The first one is uh, Severin Menard. Just some rules on the lighting talks. It's five minutes. No questions are allowed because, of course, uh, for time reasons. But I invite you, in case of questions, in case you're interested, please approach the speakers afterwards. Floor is yours. Severin, five minutes. Hello, everybody. So it's my pleasure to present you something I've been uh, working uh, on for many months, actually, uh, uh, within the UNAT Maps uh, crowdsourcing team. So we are uh, officially launching today our uh, learning hub. So this is a, a platform based on, on Moodle that you can find now uh, easily. There is, uh, have been shared, I mean, the URL have been shared uh, a few minutes ago on the social media. So it's uh, mappers.un.org slash learning. And uh, the concept of it, it's, um, it's a new platform, learning platform based on OSM, but it's a bit different because uh, it's based on Moodle. And Moodle uh, allow us to propose many contents, not only text, but see, uh, screenshot videos and quizzes. And uh, we have prepared a series of guides that, uh, that covers basics and advanced mapping techniques. Uh, so far, we will see this, uh, the, the basic one has been, uh, has been um, shared, so we, you'll be able to access to it. Um, we, we aim at providing this material to, to make and uh, proficient mappers and validators helping us to, to map um, the in OpenStreetMap. So you will have a training exercise with uh, Jawson. Uh, you will find also quizzes with uh, feedback. And uh, we, we have some um, contents that can be also used offline. It's on Moodle, but as we, we train also people in the south with a limited bandwidth, a limited internet, and that is also, uh, also console, it's how it, they can be uh, downloaded as PDF, etc. Everything is CC uh, by SA, so it's totally, totally free. And uh, you can find also the videos uh, that are replicated in a YouTube channel. We cover so far five languages, French, uh, English, Spanish, Italian, and Portuguese, and uh, we'll, we'll try to, to cover the languages. So um, I would like to make you, uh, to show you. How it looks like. So you need to log in. We, you, you have this email factor that is part of the, uh, the security, uh, the United Nations security processes. So you, 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 you will find in your email address uh, a number that you can fill. I will try the one I just opened, but maybe it won't work. Let's see, no. Yeah, I received a new one now. Uh, Oh, no, it's not. Okay. So this is the platform. You can see this um, this course. You can enter in, in it, and you have these guides. Um, uh, we try to cover from the very basics and uh, expanding the skills. Uh, one guy to another, so you will uh, know how to get start with uh, with OpenStreetMap. So this is uh, very basic uh, how you create your account, etc. And uh, then you will find a, a quiz um, that you can fill, and it's uh, just answering uh, some some question in uh, with a limited time. And if you have all the question uh, um, good, you can. Um, uh, you can process uh, the other the quizzes. 
Uh, for example, for chosen guides, uh, editor guide, that this is where you will find um, different things, including uh, how to well, use the settings with uh, videos. You can uh, also have some like this is practice practice uh, sessions. In some of these sessions, like uh, in this, uh, some of these chapters, sorry, uh, you can also download some. Um, some files to, for example, in this case, you will train yourself to um, to do an offset in um, in, in Jordan with a totally uh, 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 with data that can be uploaded in an OpenStreetMap, huh? not to harm the the, the database. Uh, we we have some uh, chapter that uh, guide that will you will not find uh, some uh, in other places like how. Well, shows you how to understand the geographical context. Uh, that would be the imagery, the topography for you not to just to map, I mean, simply building like many uh, uh, newcomers do, but uh, how to understand uh, what, you, what, what you map. So you, for example, you, that we explain you how to uh, use the, the OSM renderings to, com to, uh, to understand the, the topography, et cetera. So my time is up. The future would be uh, we, we have uh, other languages like Chinese, we, we have uh, more, more courses, more, more uh, quizzes, and we aim at uh, providing at the end a uh, certification of proficiency uh, like, or regarding your OSM skills that would be uh, uh, with a, a nice uh, United Nations uh, logo. Thank you. Next speaker, we have Tobias Knell. Here, uh, he's going to uh, give a talk titled community.osm.org. Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to my lightning talk. I would like to use my five minutes in the spotlight here at State of the Map to show you what's going on with community.osm.org, the new community discussion platform which has been launched by the OpenStreetMap Foundation. If you haven't seen it yet, if you go to the URL that was on the title slide, you will see this. It's essentially a modern discussion forum for all topics around OpenStreetMap. And we hope that this will be the platform that will be most popular among the OSM community to discuss their favorite hobby going forward. This new platform has a lot going for it. It is unlike many other third-party platforms, integrated into the OpenStreetMap website and OSM app infrastructure. So that means you can use the normal OpenStreetMap usernames that you are already using to edit the map to also participate in discussions around OpenStreetMap. It has a much more modern interface than many other offerings, um, so much so that now that I've started using it, I find myself missing these new features on other platforms that I'm also still participating in. Things like being able to quickly paste an image to easily quote sections of other users' posts and to always know exactly which posts I'm, I've already read and which I still want to reach. But if you're not a fan of modern web interfaces, the platform has to cover it anyway because it has an optional email mode that lets you pretend you're on a mailing list and receiving answers through email and replying to them in your email client as well. I hope that this will make it possible to finally bridge this gap between the older parts of the community that still prefer to use mailing lists and other parts of the community who are more used to web interfaces because they can participate in the same discussions but use their favorite way of interacting with them. The platform is also designed to gap, uh, bridge a different gap, which is the language barrier that's still preventing many parts of the community to fully interact with wider OSM discussions. And to bridge this gap, we have machine translation built directly into this platform. And all of that is open source software. So if you're one of the people who don't really trust any social media sites, you don't need to. All of this is running on OpenStreetMap Foundation hardware and is fully open source. The goal is to unify some of the fragmentation that has been building up in terms of communication channels in the OSM ecosystem. 
to start with, we would like to replace the discussion forum and help forum with this new platform. The help forum in particular is urgent because uh, the software is no longer really maintained and starting to fall apart in places. At the moment, we are still working on migrating content from the existing discussion forum so that the users of that platform yeah, perceive it as more of a software upgrade instead of a fundamental break that's kicking them out of their existing community. But of course, people have already started to consider what other platforms might eventually be replaced by this newer site. And I believe it has the potential to replace at least some of our mailing lists, in part because of this optional email mode. And some people would also like other channels to be replaced by this new platform. For example, people have suggested that using polls on a site like this is a much more convenient way than uh, performing wiki proposals by editing a wiki site and adding your name to it, or using wiki talk pages. If you haven't yet, please give it a try. Just visit community.osm.org, log in with your OSM account, and join the conversation. Feedback on how to improve the system is also gathered through a sub-forum on this very platform. And if you are a member of a local community, that is not yet represented on that new community site, I would like you to request a category specifically for your local community. Some local community has already started to have such a category to host the discussions, but I hope this number will increase a lot over the coming months. Thank you for your attention, and yeah, chat with you on community.osm.org soon. Five minutes now. Incredible. Thank you. So, Marco, please, uh, using OSM for RPGs. OK. Hi, everyone. I will be talking very fast about using OSM in RPGs, in role-play games, in virtual uh, um, tabletop role-play games. With the uh, um, two years uh, of lockdowns and pa uh, pandemic, uh, uh, me as a mapper and as a, a fan of cartography had uh, a lot uh, to, to suffer looking at the, the playing uh, board games, playing uh, uh, physically uh, uh, role play games online with horrible, horrible, horrible maps. And they can be of fantasy worlds like Toril for D&D, they can be uh, Westeros for Game of Thrones, or they can be anything else, but they're made by people who draw maps, but not, pe not cartographers, not people who understand how maps are made. On the other hand, there are uh, role play games that require uh, real world settings. And for that, the communities have several ways to get around it and download either Google Maps data or uh, uh, try to rely on uh, uh, satellite maps. And for that reason, I started thinking, well, where could I have a database where I have already a lot of data on real world? Well, taking data from Overpass Turbo, uh, scanning through uh, trees, the first, uh, the first part, um, light, uh, street lights, and uh, buildings, for example, just the three first elements that come to mind. And using GeoPandas, I was able to prepare a, a small um, plugin as a module for Foundry BTT, which is a tool for um, um, virtual tabletop uh, role play gaming, to regenerate the, the map and the area, this is uh, Bologna on, uh, on your left. And uh, this is Berlin, the same area that I was looking for uh, before, where the, the, the system automatically generated all the walls and in this case also the trees specifically for the area. And so the players can see the, the city as it should be. This is a, the, the backdrop is, is downloaded from uh, um, the map box, um, map box satellite uh, imagery, and the buildings create the real effect of uh, um, visibility or invisibility of characters and of uh, tokens inside the map. And so this uh, is a t an uh, MIT licensed uh, um, small uh, library that is available on GitHub and on uh, Foundry VTT as a tool to install on the uh, Foundry platform. That's it. 
fast. You were very fast, so maybe we still have a couple of minutes. I don't know if there are questions. I mean, we still have a couple of minutes. Marco, please stay here just in case there is any quick question. Yes, please. Uh, okay. I have a question for Tobias. Um, there is a... Um, and then I, I have also a question for you if we have time. So, um, I'm in an um, organization made up of volunteers. So um, I have seen a lot of criticism when trying to switch from a mailing list to an online forum. Um, how do you plan to address this in the future? Um, well, to the greatest extent possible, we try to make it a smooth transition by allowing people to interact with the platform the way they are comfortable, which is, for example, why we pay attention to having this email mode for people who really like communicating through email so that they can communicate in their email client without having to use this web form. Um, we also want to make the transition smooth in other ways, such as by migrating existing content, for example, from the old forum side, and essentially just making the barrier and disruption as little as possible to make it a smooth move that doesn't alienate everyone. If you have a very quick question for him, a quick and quick answer, please. Quick. Well, anyone else first? Quick, please. Um, can you give a quick example of the, cap the capabilities of uh, an online game platform? Because I'm not really into that, so. Well, uh, the capabilities mean, uh, well, you can, basically every player uh, has uh, a set of tokens, one, at least one token, representing himself inside the game. And they can, based on the rules given by the game master and the playing rules that are defined, they can interact with the world. And again, the problem is exactly how the world is represented. If we base on design map, they're cool, they're very fashionable, but they're not real. When we want to play a real world game like Vampire, like uh, Twilight 3000, which is based on a third world war, uh, after the aftermath of a thir third world war, there are rules to be followed and the structure to be, that is well defined. But it's the real world. So the, these tools help recreate the real world inside the, the, um, the virtual tabletop uh, system. Thank you, Marco. Thank you. Now, time for the last uh, uh, lighting talk. Uh, Taro, please. So we have Taro presenting OpenStreetMap.jp. Um, we might have a couple of minutes left uh, in case there are additional questions for any of the speakers. So you might want to stay here and maybe think of uh, one uh, question. Taro, floor is yeah. yours. Okay, so uh, let's start my talk about uh, tiles.openstreetmap.jp. Yes, it is a planet vector and that's the tile server. Okay, so. So I'm Taro Matsudawa from Japan. I'm working at Geo Republic Japan, and I'm a maintainer of uh, Tile OpenStreetMap.jp, and uh, I'm a contributor of uh, OpenMap Tiles project. And uh, so introduce the Tile OpenStreetMap.jp. It's it is a, a, a vector and raster tile server. So it, uh, so we run uh, ten instance of uh, uh, tile server GL and uh, vanish cache, and we distribute planet tile. So, and uh, additional uh, Japanese relation uh, tiles. Uh, and uh, you can access freely, and uh, so we uh, provide as a best uh, uh, effort. So, so, how do you make a planet vector tile? So I use uh, planet tile and uh, generate planet vector tile per week. So maybe uh, I think tomorrow I make uh, the new one. And uh, I use the, the machine. It's so not it's only uh, 60 gigabyte memory, and but it includes huge swap memory. And I recommend. Uh, to use planet tile 
for over 20, uh, 32 gigabytes of memory. Okay. So how do we split it? And uh, I upload a planet uh, date dot mv tile to my uh, own server. So, so you can uh, download the planet mv tiles uh, from uh, this server. Uh, file.smailman.org and uh, and uh, so I download the, the MB tile and uh, switch the, the file and uh, restart container so it's uh, totally a manual work so and uh, we distribute uh, three styles it's uh, the best, it's uh, the open source. Uh, so with the related uh, map styles, uh, the open source styles. So yeah, uh, I'm waiting uh, the, the OSM cut like the uh, uh, styles is as upcoming. So, so thank you. So, so the, um, thanks for, <coughs> So tile open dot map dot is hosted by Sakura Internet and the building machine provided by Kyokushia. It's a SSD company. And uh, if you find some trouble, so contact to my account on Twitter. Thank you. Thank you. We still have some minutes, so I again open the floor for questions from the audience. Uh, anyone or any of the speaker? Oh, hello, interesting. Um, how long does it take to generate the planet this way? Uh, so maybe eight hours, only eight hours. But so if you have a, a, a huge memory, so the time is uh, decreased. Uh, Other questions? Doesn't seem to be the case, so we can close the session here, but please let's make another big round of applauses for all the speakers.